Welcome to our science and technology briefing program. Today, we're diving into some fascinating stories that are making waves across the globe. First up, the stock markets have been on a wild ride lately, with Wall Street experiencing its best day in nearly two years. However, experts warn that the volatility might not be over just yet. We'll explore what this means for investors and the broader economy. Next, over 1,100 workers at Cadillac Regional Medical Center in Richland, Washington, are gearing up for an eight-day strike starting August 20th. These technology and service employees are taking a stand, and we'll look into the reasons behind their decision and the potential impact on the community. Lastly, the Wong Avery Asia-Pacific Peace Museum has officially opened in Toronto, aiming to educate the next generation about the atrocities of World War II in the Asia-Pacific region. This museum promises to be a significant educational resource, shedding light on a crucial part of history that should never be forgotten. Please stay tuned for more details on these intriguing stories. The Independent The stock markets have recently experienced a whirlwind of activity, marked by significant ups and downs. Despite initial fears of a market crash, Wall Street had its best day in nearly two years, with the S&P 500 rising by 2.3%. This optimism spread to the FTSE 100 in Britain, which saw its best session in four months. However, the underlying concerns about the U.S. economy remain, particularly regarding job data and the potential for a recession. The volatility was initially triggered by weak job data and fears about the scale of capital outlay on AI in the tech sector. A subsequent release of more favorable job data helped to ease these fears, leading to a market rally. Yet, analysts warned that the volatility may not be over, especially with upcoming economic numbers and the Federal Reserve's potential actions on interest rates. The mixed results from Disney's earnings report, particularly the underperformance of its theme park division, also signal potential issues with consumer demand in the U.S. Yahoo U.S. Workers at Cadillac Regional Medical Center in Richland, Washington, are planning an eight-day strike starting August 20. Represented by the Service Employee International Union Healthcare 1199NW, about 1,100 employees across various job categories, excluding nurses, are involved. The strike follows eight months of unsuccessful negotiations for a new contract, with the union demanding wages comparable to those at Swedish Health Services in Seattle. Cadillac has offered a 16% average wage increase over three years, but the union claims this is insufficient, especially for lower-paid workers. High turnover and difficulties in recruiting new staff have exacerbated the situation, with some employees struggling to pay their bills. Cadillac has prepared for the strike by contracting a staffing agency to ensure that all facilities remain operational. The hospital emphasizes that progress on contract negotiations must be achieved at the bargaining table, not through strikes. South China Morning Post The Wang Avery Asia-Pacific Peace Museum in Toronto aims to preserve and educate about the atrocities in Asia during World War II a history often overlooked in Western education. Founded by Joseph Wong Yukai, the museum is the culmination of years of effort to raise awareness about the war's impact on Asia. Wong, inspired by his experiences learning about the Holocaust, realized that many Canadians were unaware of the suffering in Asia during the same period. The museum, featuring 10 galleries, covers topics such as the causes of the war, major atrocities, and post-war events. It aims to provide an objective view using primary sources and addresses issues like denialism and revisionism. The museum also highlights lesser-known facts, such as the involvement of Chinese Canadians in clandestine operations during the war. With significant donations and years of fundraising, the museum now serves as a vital educational resource, ensuring that this dark chapter of history is not forgotten. South China Morning Post on a serene Saturday morning in mid-July, Angeline Lien, a Shanghai native working in Hong Kong, received a WhatsApp message from her landlord about a lease renewal offering a tempting 20,000 Hong Kong dollars discount if she paid 100,000 Hong Kong dollars up front for the year. Trusting the offer, she transferred 50,000 Hong Kong dollars, her entire savings, only to later discover it was a scam initiated through a phishing link. Lien's case is part of a larger trend in Hong Kong, where digital scams have surged with 39,000 scams reported in 2023 alone, resulting in 9 billion Hong Kong dollars in losses. The rise of generative artificial intelligence, Gen AI, has made these scams increasingly convincing, necessitating sophisticated countermeasures. Cybersecurity firms like Trend Micro and CyberArk are deploying AI tools to combat these threats, such as deepfake detection software and secure browsers. Despite these efforts, the growing use of cryptocurrencies has introduced new vulnerabilities, highlighting the need for continuous innovation and public awareness to combat cyber fraud effectively. 
South China Morning Post, Pandora, the world's largest jewelry brand by products sold, announced in January its commitment to using only recycled gold and silver, aiming to reduce its carbon footprint and address environmental concerns. This shift, which surpassed its initial 2025 target, required significant changes in its supply chain to ensure the provenance of recycled metals. CEO Alexander Lasik emphasized that recycling could drastically reduce the jewelry industry's climate footprint, estimating a 25% reduction in CO2 emissions from its supply chain. Other brands, like Monica Venator and Tiffany & Company, are also adopting recycled materials and sustainable practices. Boucherin is using upcycled materials like cofalate, derived from asbestos waste, while Pomolato employs the Japanese kintsugi technique to repair and upcycle damaged stones. The push towards sustainability extends to lab-grown diamonds, with Pandora collaborating with suppliers using 100% renewable energy. This industry-wide shift reflects a growing consumer demand for eco-conscious products and a commitment to preserving the planet. South China Morning Post, access to clean water is a fundamental human right and essential for community health and development. In the Philippines, devastating floods and water shortages have prompted the Senate to propose a Department of Water Resources to address these crises. Globally, 2 billion people lack access to fresh water, and over 3 billion lack adequate sanitation, with water scarcity exacerbating gender inequality. Organizations like Better With Water are working to provide affordable water solutions through tailored payment systems and innovative water networks. Winning the Zayed Sustainability Prize has enabled them to expand their projects in the Philippines and Bangladesh. The expertise from cities like Singapore and Hong Kong in water management and urban planning can enhance these efforts. Events like Singapore International Water Week showcase a commitment to sustainable solutions. Meanwhile, employers must adapt to the evolving work preferences of Gen Z, who prioritize work-life balance and flexible arrangements. Understanding and harnessing the potential of this digital native generation is crucial for future workforce dynamics. South China Morning Post, Ching Shi the formidable pirate queen who commanded a fleet of 1,800 ships and 80,000 crew members, has been brought back to life in a revolutionary way by filmmaker Maya Bodenstein. Through the Emmy-nominated video game, the pirate queen, Bodenstein, alongside game director Eloise Singer, has managed to capture the essence of this historical figure, setting the game in the South China Sea during the Qing Dynasty. The game features the voice of Hollywood star Lucy Liu and immerses players in a fictionalized night in 1807 when Qing Shi rises to power. Bodenstein, who has a multicultural background with roots in Germany and Beijing, drew upon her rich heritage and childhood experiences in China and Hong Kong to infuse authenticity into the game. The project, which began as a single demo level, garnered attention at the Raindance Film Festival and secured funding from Meta for a full version. The game is available on the MetaQuest platform and Steam Store for PC VR. Bodenstein's success with The Pirate Queen is just the beginning, as she has plans to expand the story into a film, podcast series, and graphic novel. Her other projects include a gothic thriller called The Mannequin and an action-adventure film, Detective Zeke and the Jade Tablets of Destiny, reflecting her deep connection to her Chinese heritage. South China Morning Post, Alibaba Group Holding is pushing the boundaries of artificial intelligence with the launch of Quentu Math, a series of math-specific large language models, LLMs, that reportedly outperform leading models from OpenAI, Google, and others. Built on the Quen2 LLMs released in June, these new models excel in solving complex arithmetic and mathematical problems, as evidenced by their performance on benchmarks like GSM8K, Olympiad Bench, and the Gaokao. The model with the largest parameter count, Quen2 Math 72B Instruct, has shown superior capabilities compared to GPT-40, Anthropic's Claude 3.5 Sonnet, Google's Gemini 1.5 Pro, and Meta Platform's Llama 3.1-405B. Alibaba's commitment to enhancing the reasoning capabilities of LLMs is evident in their plan to release bilingual and multilingual models soon. This advancement underscores the narrowing gap between Chinese and US AI models, with Alibaba's Quen 72B Instruct already ranking high in global open source model evaluations. Open source accessibility has allowed third party developers to contribute to and enhance these models, further solidifying Alibaba's position in the AI landscape. The Quen team's focus on community contribution and solving complex mathematical problems highlights their ambition to lead in the AI sector. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, 
government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email. Turn the lights on screen, what's the latest scene? Just you and me, laugh and disagree. On the couch we sit, talk about the hits, news and bits and bits, chat through all the fits. Sister Greek chest. Six degrees.